Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Shu Jin Wang. Um, for this video, I'm going to continue talking about the Beethoven Sonata, uh, Opus 53, the first movement. In the first three episodes, um, I got to about measure 53. Um, to, in today's video, I try, I will try to finish this whole movement because a lot of the materials are kind of recycling materials. It's, it's the same ideas, but just um, happening in a different key or it has a different way of, of developing them. And a lot of what I will share today will be about preventing mistakes. Yeah, because you see, maybe I have a different understanding of what is a tutorial. I've had comments asking, uh, telling me that what I'm producing is really not tutorials, but uh, instead a uh, master class or lectures. Um, but you know, my my original idea is really to just share on the internet with with music lovers and and piano students on my thoughts on on some of these uh, very classic pieces, and a lot of what I'm doing is actually trying to warn students of potential mistake spots because when I taught this piece, I probably taught this piece 20 times to different uh, students or in different occasions, some of my own words, some of the master classes. And sometimes I see the trend of same mistakes made by different students. And that really arose um, my attention and, and I, into this video, I, particularly, I will share some of those tricky spots in the rhythm that I hope um, people would would really prevent this um, from from happening again. Um, the last time we stopped around measure fifty one. <laughs> So here, what I want to share is that um, please do not have accents. Don't have accents on, on the first note or that very often I hear people because I mean, it's, it's an octave. It, it is uh, it's easier to play louder than the rest, but so many people play and then you can't hear the rest. However, yeah, the real melody goes, yeah, and with this repeated pattern, uh, it's supposed to go to the last note, the fourth F flat, and which Beethoven marked the sforzando. So um, that is really important that, to to remember. Um, in measure eighty two, that's a a very common spot that this rhythm mistake starts to happen. Uh, two measures before this, yeah, this is in four, um, and this, this the whole uh, first movement was supposed to count in four, but then within each beat, there are three eighth notes. Um, however, uh, in this part, when we start, we have 16th note in the right hand. So we have six 16th notes within one beat. One, one, yeah. And then two measures later, we have five quintuplets. And a very common mistake the students would do is they just use the same speed. Yeah. If you do that, you end up actually missing one sixth of a beat. So instead of just transform this from one hand to another uh, transitions to, to a different rhythm group, what we should do is we should start counting one, two, three in bigger uh, division. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we actually have to feel like this rhythm is broadening a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, five, five. And 
and this every time you have five, um, I think every note supposed to be a little bit deeper. Yeah, I think Beethoven wants us to use more effort. When we play, instead of instead of playing it like how we practice arpeggios every day, it's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be with effort. Um, and now let's jump to measure 123 yeah, because most of the materials has happened in the first 50 measures. Um, and this is the first tricky spot uh, in terms of rhythm. Yeah. So we have 12 beats per measure. We have we divide them into four, and then three, four. Uh, we have uh, three times four. We have twelve beats, and we're supposed to have twenty-four sixteenths notes, because uh, supposedly one beat equals a eighth note in this case. But however, when we see this, so many students just saw okay, this is a massive amount of sixteenths note. Let me just play all the 16th note one after another. So a lot of people would play. Yeah, and it, it sounds okay to them, but it's actually wrong. Because what happened before the right hand takes over is that left hand has a eighth note instead of a 16th note. So there actually is a little pulse before the right hand steps in. And then the pulse becomes longer because supposedly left hand has six note, but at the very beginning of this measure it has five, but then it has four, and then three. Yeah. So supposedly, if we translate this into all sixteenth note, it should be. So that's how much longer you should wait instead of just comes over whenever the left hand finishes. And then the measure after this 125 is actually all 16th note, 16th note. However, 126, you see that eighth note coming again. So it's, this time it's the left hand has to wait that one uh, 16th note uh, to, to, to start. And here comes um, measure 218. And I would say, at least from my experience, um, six or seven out of 10 students, when they start learning this piece, will miss this spot. Um, because we have seven beats, of the same rhythm which is all 16th note after it's another right hand plays three and then left hand plays three yeah. so actually in measure 218 we do have uh, we do have 24 16th notes however the last beat of 219 we have it, the pattern switched. So uh, let me play from 218. Yeah. If we take a look at the right hand, they always come in before a 16th note rest. However, at the very last beat, last group of 219, we come in before, uh, after a eighth note uh, rest. So there's that little extra weight. And then two measures later. And then in the next two measures, we have this kind of sudden stop almost within the flow. We have it twice per measure. Yeah. 
And now everything go back to normal. Yeah. So uh, really, uh, most of the time the student would miss this. And another purpose of I me mean, making this video is that if I have a, a college student wanting to start this, I will ask them to specifically watch the fourth episode uh, so that they prevent this uh, from, from happening. And then I save about five minutes in our lesson time. Um, and also, you know, what's most important, they can learn this in a correct way from the very beginning. Um, the almost cadenza-like section tricky because we only have single notes, single hand playing arpeggios, um, and it's fortissimo, so it's kind of hard to keep them strong and accurate and fast um, because the most of the time when we train our hand to play arpeggios, we don't add this much weight. Yeah, We don't play arpeggios all in fortissimo. So the key to successfully play this section is to always apply the arm weight instead of using fingers. Because the fingers are built uh, unequally. Yeah? Some fingers thicker or stronger than the others. But arm, it's the same. We have the same arm that the five fingers share. So the key to total evenness of sound is to apply arms instead of fingers only. Um, and one other point regarding to the rhythm um, or the pulses is towards the very, very last page. And when we have So we have two hands, but then we have a, a triplet feeling, um, so the accent is shared within the two hands. Left, right, left, and then right hand start, left hand start, and right hand start. Yeah? A lot of times I see people start get confused where they start to rush in this part. But one, two, three, four. Yeah? Um, and towards the end, do not do this retardando so early. Uh, from my imagination of this ending, it's not that this train is stopping. It's not stopping, it's just moving further and further away from you. So it, it doesn't really s reduce the speed, but it's just you, you don't hear it anymore. But so many students start to do this much slower. <laughs> Yeah, which makes it very uncomfortable for the right hand and for the pulse um, and for the whole thing to end. So try your best to keep up the tempo until the very, very last couple of notes. Yeah? Maybe only towards the very last note you do a little bit of pulse because people need to know that's the ending of the movement. But then do not do it anywhere earlier than that. Um, somehow I managed to finish this whole movement uh, with in this one episode. Um, I did the first three episodes uh, for like maybe 15 uh, measures only and now I finished this uh, 260 measures um, within another uh, episode. But the point is um, what I'm doing here is trying to prevent mistake making. Um, and I really, um, maybe if you already know how to play this, this will be helpful. But um, if you haven't started learning this, it's really beneficial to see these so that you know where are the potential danger of making mistakes. Um, I hope I have um, time in the holiday season 
to upload the next two movements. But if not, um, I will be doing that as soon as I have time. Thank you for watching. See you next time.